Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, this is the second session. We are going to start right now uh, because we have different things that we are going to learn today. Um, but let me go to the document because you know that we have a, a document in which we are going to work. But give me a moment. And also uh, give me a moment to uh, go to the platform because we are going to work on the platform and we are going to see other videos that we have there that are part of the topics that we are going to develop. And also we are going to work in one of the knowledge uh, check that we have there. So we are going to put into practice the information that we have about the adverse of frequency and um, this kind of topics in which we are like uh, expressing um, in uh, which cases or in this case, um, the quantity of the days in which we are performing an activity. And in this case, we were like, um, talking about different activities that we do during the day. And in that case, um, we were like explaining something about the, the schedules, we can say, because you were like giving some examples about the activities that you perform in your daily life. So in that case, we are going to continue with that part because we have some questions that we are going to do. Um, with this kind of information. Um, on the document, we have a couple of questions and those questions are related to the adverse of frequency. So in this case, we are going to continue from that part and then we are going to see the other examples that we have about the adverse of frequency and then we are going to continue with the other topics that we have for today. Ayer hablábamos un poco de los adverbios de frecuencia y hablábamos de cómo nosotros hacemos nuestras actividades, qué tan seguido las hacemos, y por qué es importante, ¿verdad?, que nosotros hablemos de los adverbs of frequency. Eh, tenemos un par de preguntas que ya las vamos a ver en el documento, que empezamos con un adverb of frequency, and we are going to continue with others. So in this case, we are going to see the word always, the word sometimes, and how often? So we are going to make three different groups of questions in which we can use this adverse of frequency. So let's see. So here we have the questions. These are the questions that we have for the first um, group of words. So for the, free, the first um, group of questions that we have related to the adverb of frequency. In this case, we have usually. Usually is the first adverb of frequency that we use with this kind of a question. So in this case, we have the following questions. What do you usually do in the afternoons? What do you usually do in the morning? What do you usually do at night? What do you usually do during the weekends? What music do you usually listen to? And what is something that you usually do in your free time? In this case, we are talking about the activities that we perform in a specific a moment in the day. So in this case, we are like dividing the different moments that we have in uh, one day. And we can like um, specify the activities that we are performing in that moment. Aquí es para especificar, ¿verdad? Actividades que nosotros hacemos durante el día 
o en algún momento en específico del día. It is not necessary that we make a list or something like that. We just can uh, think about the activities that are like, like a routine. Actividades que son como rutinas to answer this question. So in this case, uh, we are going to answer this question. We are going to like listen some examples of these uh, answers. So in this case, I have a couple of participants here. So in this case, let me see. Let's see. Is Marina here? Yes. Okay, for the first question, what do you usually do in the afternoons? I I usually do in a cook. Ah, you usually cook during the afternoons. Very good. Thank you, Cindy. Well, hi. Okay, for the second question, what do you usually do in the mornings? I usually go to work. Oh, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's see. Mm, Carlos? Uh, for the three, uh, third question? Yes, for the number three. What do you usually do at night? I usually play video games at night. Oh, very good. Thank you. Excellent. Mm, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oscar. No, okay. Pablo. Hi, teacher. Hello. For the question Hi, number teacher. four, uh, what do you usually do no, during no. the weekends? On the weekends, I usually I. Usually, wash my clothes on the weekend. I go with my friend, go to the court, cancha. Uh -huh. On Saturday, I have electricity classes. Plus, okay. Classes. On Sunday, I go to, uh, out, uh, to eat with my girlfriend. Oh. And we go to the crunch. Oh, wow. You have a very busy weekend. You do a lot of activities. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And let's okay. see. Who else? Who else? Idalia? Okay. Okay. For the question number five, what music do you usually listen to? Um, I, I usually... Um, I usually salsa. Oh, okay. You usually listen to salsa. Very good. Okay, thank you. And for the last question, Marjorie. Uh, In your free time. Yes, yes. I, I usually play video games with my children. Uh, play video, game, video games or play soccer and oh. check homework. Okay, okay, very good. Thank you, excellent. So we have different activities that we perform during the day. In the morning, maybe we go to work. In the afternoons, uh, in this case, we can think about the moment uh, after the work, because um, in this case is when we finish doing all the things that we have to do um, in the day. So in the afternoons, maybe we have like time for the friends, time for family. Uh, we can go to play soccer. We can go to play video games. We can watch a movie. Or maybe if we have different activities like 
uh, if you have uh, children, you need to, to um, check the, the notebooks if they have like homeworks or if they have a project or if they have to read something. So in that case, we have a lot of things to do during the day. And on the weekends, uh, maybe we have like an example here uh, that um, Pablo said that he do a lot of things during the weekend because um, he performs a lot of, of things. But maybe other people prefer to rest, to have a moment, to be in peace, to stay in home and to watch a movie to eat something delicious and to, to like charge the battery. So in that case, we have like different um, activities to do during the weekends. And in the case of music, we have different um, taste in music because we can uh, listen to salsa, we can listen to um, classical music, we can listen to rock music, we can listen to... Um, I don't know, different kind of um, styles in this case. Okay, so this is the first group of questions. Este es el primer grupo de preguntas con el usually. Algo que tenemos que notar con estas preguntas is the place in which the word is placed. ¿Dónde se posiciona? ¿Dónde está en la posición del usually? In this case, it's in the middle. Está en el medio de nuestra oración. Y si nos fijamos, todas, todas, todas las preguntas lo tienen en el mismo lugar. So, I'm going to mark the word that is this one. Just in this one, in the question number five, what music do you usually? It's almost at the end. Because in this case, we are uh, using like another kind of a, a structure. And in the last one also, what is something that you usually saw? But it's almost the same thing in the middle of the structure or in the middle of the sentence. Casi siempre vemos acá que va al medio de nuestra pregunta. No va al principio, no va hasta el final, sino en medio de la estructura. What do you usually do in the afternoon? No, no dice, what usually you do? Sino, what do you usually do? Y vamos a ver las estructuras de los otros grupos de preguntas. Now, we are going to uh, see the second group. In this case, don't worry, we are not going to answer this one. These are just for examples. Vamos a verlas nada más como ejemplo. Vamos con la palabra always. And in this case, let me see, we have this one. And it says, do you always dream? Do you always dream? That is a very interesting question because uh, maybe we don't remember our dreams, but it's an interesting question to begin, like a conversation related to dreams, related to different kind of things. But it's very, like, interesting. Next one. Do you always play video games? Do you always play video games? Do you always visit certain websites or programs every day? This one is a long question. It's like kind of long, but if you can see, we are repeating the same structure at the beginning of the question. Number four, we are going to do six, like in the first group. Uh, do you always go to bed before midnight? Next one, do you, um, 
do you always go to bed after midnight? In this case, we have two questions that are almost the same, but we are talking about different moments in the night. And the last one, do you always wake up before 8 a.m.? Do you always go to bed I mean, uh, wake up is in this case. Before 8 a.m. Okay, in this case, if you can see, we are doing the same thing with all of the questions. We are using the auxiliary do, the subject, and then the adverb of frequency. Do you always, do you always, do you always? And then we add all the elements that we are using for the questions. Give me a moment. Okay, aquí está. Al inicio de nuestra pregunta llevamos lo mismo. Do you always? And then we have the idea or the topic that we need to ask about. Aquí hacemos la pregunta, pero al final agregamos el tema del que estamos haciendo la pregunta. Como en el primer caso, do you always dream? Tú siempre sueñas. Do you always play video games? Tú siempre juegas videojuegos. Do you always visit certain websites or programs every day? Tú siempre visitas los mismos sitios web o ves los mismos programas todos los días. Do you always go to bed before midnight? Aquí tenemos estas dos preguntas donde lo que quieres saber es si nos dormimos antes o después de la medianoche. Y por último, si nos levantamos eh, antes de las 8 de la mañana. En este caso, después del do you always, we are going to add the topic that we need to know what is the answer. Now, in this one, that is the uh, third group, this one is the group number three of questions, we are going to see some questions with the word sometimes. And you know that this adverb is one of the adverbs that we can move through the statement. It is not necessary that we have um, this adverb in the same place in every statement. We can have the word sometimes at the beginning, we can have sometimes in the middle, and we can have sometimes at the end. Entonces, sometimes es el que se puede mover, ¿verdad? Es el, casi el único que nosotros podemos poner en diferentes lugares de la oración. And we are going to see some examples of questions with the word sometimes. And we have the first one. Do your car workers sometimes experience a stress or anxiety? Do your car workers sometimes experience tell me oscar no okay no no sorry teacher oh, sorry don't worry don't worry experience a stress or anxiety and this is very common right now. We can have this kind of uh, travels when we are working because we have a lot of things to do. So in this case, the answer is maybe yes. 
Next one. Do you swear sometimes? In this case, we have the word sometimes at the end. Do you swear? Sometimes. Maybe when we are very, very angry. That is like something like that. Where do you sometimes go with your friends? Do you dance sometimes? Do you dance sometimes? Maybe when it is a party, maybe when I am cooking, maybe when I am happy, or maybe when I am playing with my kids. Kind of questions like that. Do you sometimes forget important dates? Do you sometimes forget important dates? Maybe yes, maybe not because we are very uh, organized or maybe, I don't know, different kind of things. Aquí podemos ver que la palabra sometimes no siempre va en el mismo lugar. In the first question, we have the word sometimes uh, in the middle of the statement. Or in this case, in the middle of the question. And the second one, we have the word sometime at the end. And it is incorrect? No, it is correct because this one we can move through the statement. Again, we have sometimes in the middle. Next one, again in the in the end of the statement. And in the last one, in this case, we just have five. Uh, we have in the middle of the statement. And we have the group of questions. Now, with the last group of questions, we are going to use how often. Aquí estamos hablando no eh, de los adverbios como tal dentro de la pregunta, pero sí estamos hablando que para nuestra respuesta, lo más seguro es que utilicemos adverse of frequency. Porque el how often me pregunta a mí, ¿qué tan seguido Tú haces una acción. Entonces, yo voy a contestar y yo voy a decir, I always, I sometimes, I never, I usually, I rarely ever, I almost always, I different advert of frequency. To explain um, the quantity of time that I put to this action. Entonces, con esas preguntas, sí, la respuesta es la que lleva el adverb of frequency. So, in this case, how often? Okay, and we have maybe, yes, like just four questions. Solo cuatro preguntas, no vamos a escribir muchas. And we have the first one, and it says, how often do you go to the cinema? How often? Did you go to the cinema? Mm, maybe once a year or once a week or twice a month. Um, maybe every weekend, um, every month. We have different questions. Or, or maybe I never go to the cinema. Because I don't like that space. I don't know. Different kind of uh, answers with advert of frequency. How often do you play soccer? How often do you play soccer? I always play soccer on Monday. I always play soccer um, on Fridays. I never play soccer because I prefer basketball, volleyball, I don't know, different kind of sports. Or I never play soccer because I don't like it. That is that kind of uh, answers. Number three, how often do you exercise? How often do you exercise? 
And the last one, how often do you play video games? I usually play video games during the afternoons. I sometimes play video games on Wednesdays because uh, I have free time. Uh, I never play video games because I don't have time. I never play video games because I don't like that kind of activities, different kind of things. So we need to answer those questions with the adverse of frequency. Okay, now we end this part of the questions. Aquí ya terminamos nuestra eh, parte de lo que son las preguntas con los adverse of frequency o para responder nuestros adverse of frequency. And we are going to see the knowledge check 1.4. Vamos a ver el primer knowledge check de nuestra plataforma. Vamos a trabajar en él. So give me a moment because I'm going to charge the platform. And we are going to work on those exercises. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. I understand. Because right now it's all, also um, raining here and that is not very common uh, here because uh, we are a very hot place, but it's raining since 5 p.m., I guess. So it's it's something very interesting right now. Thank you, okay. Coach. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, knowledge check 1.4. Let's see. This one. Ah, but I need to share the sound because we are going to see a video later. So, in this one, read the following prompts. Choose the response in which the adverb in blankets is placed correctly. Vamos a leer los siguientes puntos que aparecen aquí o las siguientes preguntas. Y vamos a responder cuáles adverbios están colocados correctamente. Para esta actividad, I'm going to give you two minutes to see one and two. Dos minutos para ver la pregunta uno y la eh, parte dos. After the two minutes, you are going to tell me which one is the correct option. Then we are going to see the other um statements and you are going to help me with the answer so we have two minutes to see and to read the information a a29 we are going to give the answer to a 31 831 damos nuestra respuesta so let's read the statement
Okay, let's see. In the first one, do you play sports? And we have the word ever. Do you ever play sports? Ever you play sports or do you play sports ever? One, two, or three? One. The first one. Okay, I... the, okay, the first one. Let's see in number two. Sure, I play soccer and we have twice a week. Sure, I twice a week play soccer. Twice a week, sure, I play soccer. Or oh, sure, I play soccer twice a week. One, two, or three? Two. Three, okay. Three. Okay, number three. Very good. And then we have other two. Tenemos otras dos. The same thing. Two minutes, and then you are going to help me with the answer. 8.34. A las 8.34 damos nuestra respuesta. Don't worry. We are, like, very... Um, relax with this kind of activities. Don't worry, we have two minutes. Okay, number three. What do you do on Saturday morning? And we have the word usually. And we have three different options. What do you usually do on Saturday morning? What do you do on Saturday usually morning? What usually do you do on Saturday morning? Option one, two, or three? Option one. Number one. Option one. Okay, number one. Okay, very good. Next one, number four. Nothing much. I sleep until noon, almost always. Nothing much. I sleep until noon, almost always. Nothing much. I almost always sleep until noon. And nothing much. I sleep until almost always noon. Option one, two, or three? Option number two. two. Number, Number two. two, okay. And we have a lot of, so in this case, we are going to see this one. Um, Do you do aerobics at the gym? No, I do aerobics. And do you um exercise on Sundays? In this case, you can look for the answers and we are going to answer this question. Let me see if we can, like this. But the same thing, two minutes, and then we continue with the exercise.
Okay, number five. Do you do aerobics at the gym? And we have the word often. Often, do you do aerobics at the gym? Do you often do aerobics at the gym? And do often you do aerobics at the gym? Option one, two, or three? Number two. Number two. Okay, number two. Number six. No, I do aerobics and we have hardly ever. No, I do hardly ever uh, aerobics. No, hardly ever I do aerobics. And no, I hardly ever do aerobics. One, two, or three? Number three. Number three. Uh, okay, number three. And we have number seven. Do you exercise on Sundays? And we have the word always. Do you always exercise on Sundays? Do you exercise on Sundays always? And always, do you exercise on Sundays? Option one, two, or three. Option one. Number one. Number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're going to finish with these three. No, I exercise on Sundays, and we have the word never. And then we have, what do you do after class? And we have the word usually. And in the last one, we have, I go out with my classmates about three times a week. So to finish it, we are going to complete a 40. A las 8.40 terminamos con esto. Don't think too much. So we have two minutes to complete this one. Okay, let's see. In number eight, no, I exercise on Sundays. No, I exercise on Sundays never. No, I never exercise on Sundays. And no, I exercise never on Sundays. Option one, two, or three. Option two. Mm, two. two. Option two. Okay, option two. Number nine, what do you do I after understand. class? What do you usually do after class? What do you do after okay. class usually? What do you usually do, do after class? One, two, or three? Number one. 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 Okay, number one. And the last one. I go out with my classmates. I about three times a week go out with my classmates. About three times a week, I go out with my classmates. And I go out with my classmates about three times a week. Number one, two, or three? Number three. Number three. Number three. Okay. Let's see if they are correct. Okay. Every statement is correct. Very good. Very, very good. We have all of the answers correct. And talking about exercise, you know that you need to complete the section one and two for this first week. 
So on Thursday, we are going to complete the section one and two because um, we need to complete the two sections. And then we are just going to work on one session per week. But in the first week, you know that we are uh, going to complete it to different sections. Now, we are going to see this video that is kind of short, but it is talking about intonation with direct address. Vamos a escuchar um, un poco sobre pronunciación, and en este caso es acerca de la entonación de las palabras. But it is kind of short, so we are going to listen this video twice. Vamos a escuchar dos veces para entender un poco la parte de la entonación. So, let's pay attention to the intonation of the examples. In this session, participants will listen to intonation with direct address. This helps sound natural when speaking. There is usually falling intonation and a pause before the name. You're really fit, Paul. She looks tired, James. I feel great, Dr. Lee. Remember to listen and practice as many times as needed. In this session, participants will listen to intonation with yeah. direct address. This helps sound natural when speaking. There is usually falling intonation and a pause before the name. You're really fit, Paul. She looks tired, James. I feel great, Dr. Lee. Remember to listen and practice as many times as needed. The okay, this one is just like explaining the falling and rising intonation. Es más que todo hablar, ¿verdad?, de lo que es la pronunciación y cómo baja la pronunciación cuando tenemos eh, diferentes um, elementos. En este caso, aquí lo dice. En las oraciones, ¿verdad?, con eh, direct address, siempre vamos a utilizar un fallen intonation y una pausa antes del de nombre, ¿verdad?, antes de decir el nombre de la persona con la que estamos hablando, así como aparece en los ejemplos. You are really fit, Paul. You are really fit, Paul. She looks tired, James. She looks tired, James. And the last one said, I feel great, Dr. Lee. We make a, a pause and then we uh, make a fallen intonation to say the name of the person. But this one is just a practice uh, to sound more natural when we are talking in English. So in this case, you can like um, practice this kind of uh, statements and you are going to improve your English pronunciation. And the last video that we are going to watch right now is this one. That is uh, a video related to questions with how. Preguntas con how or como. Um, we are going to understand different elements about this kind of questions. And then we are going to talk about um, the use of the how and how to create questions with this word. You know that we have the uh, question words like what, when, how, uh, which, why. So in this case, this one is a WH word. Tenemos un grupo de palabras que nos sirven para hacer nuestras preguntas. Y how va dentro de ese grupo que son las WH words. No empieza con W, pero es un elemento que va dentro de su palabra. Entonces vamos a ver más información eh, relacionada con el how after the video. So we are going to pay uh, we are going to pay attention to the information on the video and then we are going to um, talk about the questions with how. So let's see what is the information that we can find here. In this session, participants will watch and study questions with how and to give short answers. Hello everyone. We will go over four important questions we can ask in order to know frequency and performance. Notice all questions begin with how. Pay attention. Questions with how. Short answers. How often do you work out? Every day. Twice a week. 
Not very often. How long do you spend at the gym? 30 minutes a day. Two hours a week. About an hour on weekends. How well do you play tennis? Pretty well. About average. Not very well. How good are you at sports? Pretty good. Okay. Not so good. How? How often? How long? They refer to times or frequency. How well? How good? They refer to performance. How often do you go to English class? How long do you spend at school? How well do you speak English? How good are you at speaking English? Please answer these questions on our discussion box. A. Twice a week. Okay, in this case, we are not just talking about um, how to create questions with how. In this case, we are like uh, understanding what is the use that we can give to this uh, word. And if you uh, read this information, they are giving to you different combination of words and what kind of information do uh, you can have when you are answering these questions. We have how often, how well, how long, how good. Remember that when we are learning about the WH uh, words, we know that how um, has different combinations in which we can talk about different uh, things that are very specific. Cuando hablamos de lo que es el, la palabra how o la pregunta how, es la que tiene varias combinaciones, ¿verdad? Se combina con otras palabras para eh, hacer preguntas bastante específicas. Por ejemplo, tenemos acá el número uno. How often? ¿Qué tan seguido hacemos nosotros una acción? How well? ¿Qué tan buenos verdad, somos en alguna actividad o en alguna um, acción? How long? Eh, ¿Cuánto tiempo? Estamos hablando de tiempo, ¿verdad? ¿Cuánto tiempo nosotros eh, permanecemos en un lugar? ¿Cuánto tiempo nosotros gastamos haciendo alguna actividad? Different things. And how good. ¿Qué tan bueno? Aquí, ¿qué tan bueno tú eres? En el anterior era, ¿qué tan bien haces tú algo? Aquí, ¿qué tan bueno eres? Eh, no sé, leyendo un libro, doing different things. Pero también se refiere a la distancia, al tiempo. We have different things depending on the words in which we are making this kind of combination. And we have some examples of answers. Tenemos algunas respuestas, por ahí algunos ejemplos de respuesta. How often do you work out? Every day, twice a week, not very often. In the second one, How well do you play tennis? ¿Qué tan bien juegas el tenis? Pretty well, about average, not very well. How long do you spend at the gym? ¿Qué, eh, qué tanto tiempo o cuánto tiempo eh, permaneces o pasas en el gimnasio? 30 minutes a day, two hours a week, about an hour on weekends. And the last one, it says, how good are you at sports? ¿Qué tan bueno eres en los deportes? And this one said, pretty good. Okay, not so good. So in this case, we're like focusing on the answers that we can give to every uh, questions that we can make with how. But we are going to take this 10 minutes to complete the information or to see something Uh, related to how with questions. So let me go here, here. We are going to move to the other. Okay, here. And we are going to right here questions with how so the first thing is that how is used 
to ask about manner, condition, process, quality, or to ask for distance, length, quantity, age, and per and reason. Entonces tenemos muchos, muchos detalles que nosotros podemos, eh, o sobre muchos temas de los que podemos preguntar, así como lo dice aquí, sobre la manera, la condición, el proceso, la calidad de algo, para preguntar sobre la distancia, eh, también las medidas, cantidades, edades, y también para preguntar por razones. How is used also to obtain information about the way something happens or the manner or way somebody behaves or do something. We can also use the word how to ask or to obtain information about the behavior of someone. También para preguntar sobre el comportamiento de otra persona. So we are going to see some examples. And in this case, we are going to divide these ones um, about the information that they are going to like ask. In this case, we are going to begin with um, manner or condition or quantity, or I mean quality. Vamos a hacer los primeros ejemplos de manera de condición o de calidad. Okay, in these examples, we have the following questions. I mean, it's not this one. It's, let's see, let's see, let's see. This one. Okay. In the first question, we have something that is very, um, you are very familiar with this question because it is very basic. How are you? How are you? How is your health? How is your health? Como esta tu salud? How is your business? And how is your new teacher? In the second one, we have how far. In this case, we're talking about the distance. Uh, we're going to write just distance, like this. Estamos hablando de distancia. Estamos preguntando por distancia. And we have the first one that said, how far is Pattaya from Bangkok?
How far is the school from your residence? Next one. In this case, we're not going to write a lot of examples. This is just like to know how can we create these kind of questions. In this one, how long? We are talking about length. And this one is related to time or space. Estamos hablando de tiempo o espacio. And we have the following examples. And it says, how long will it take? How long will it take? How long will this game go on? How long, I mean, how long this game go on? I mean, wheel in this case. How long had Laura lived in Africa? So in this case, um, we have just two minutes or something to end this session. And I just want to uh, have this time to say something. Okay, in this case, um, remember that you have the link of this document on the group. You can access to the information um, the whole time. If you can... Uh, see the information in the morning. You can see the information in the morning, in the afternoon, whatever it is. And I'm going to add more examples to these questions because we have a long list of questions and we have like different uh, examples. So it is not necessary to um, see the whole things right now. So I'm going to add the other exercise, I mean, the other examples, and you can access to the document to see what are the other examples about. Así que vamos a dejarlo hasta el, el how long. Y yo les voy a agregar otros ejemplos extras en el documento para que ustedes lo puedan ir revisando y así no, tiene, no tengan que estar viendo el, eh, la lista larga de ejemplos, de preguntas. Eh. No, that is not the point. Así que yo les voy a agregar los otros ejemplos, maybe tomorrow, y ustedes van a estar viendo eso durante el, el transcurso del día. Um, so, that is the thing. So, we are going to end the session here because it's time, and we are going to see each other tomorrow. Remember to work on the platform. You need to um, do all the activities that you have there. So, have a really good night, and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night.